In this video we again consider the AR1 model, but now we look at the stationarity condition and the properties of the model given stationary. The AR1 model is given by the following yt equal to delta plus theta yt minus 1 plus a shock or an innovation epsilon t. And this is for t equal 1, 2, all the way to capital T, so that's our sample size. Then we make the assumption that the shocks epsilon t are iid, which means 0 and variance sigma squared. So finally, we assume that the initial value, y0, is given. In the first video, we showed that the MA representation for the AR1 model is given by the following. For a second, assume that yt started in the infinite past. So we simply take the, this and recursively substitute infinitely back in time. So that gives us yt, and now we get 1 plus theta plus theta squared, and this is going to be an infinite sum multiplied by delta, the constant term. Then the role of the initial value will disappear, and we will get epsilon t, theta, epsilon t minus 1, theta squared, epsilon t minus 2, and again this will involve an infinite amount of epsilons from the past. So this model we should recognize as an infinite MA model. The stationarity condition is given by theta numerically smaller than 1. If that's the case, that implies that yt is stationary. So this is the stationarity condition, and it implies that the MA sum converges. So that's the sum of the MA coefficients, which is given by 1 plus theta plus theta squared plus, which is an infinite sum, this will converge to 1 over 1 minus theta. This implies that the process for yt is stable over time. Moreover, if the stationarity condition is fulfilled, theta to the power of i will converge to 0 for i going towards infinity. From now on, assume that theta fulfills the stationarity condition, and we will use the, that and then consider the unconditional mean, variance, and the autocovariances. And we will show that these are constant, so that the process is stationary, given that the stationarity condition is fulfilled, of course. So first, we look at the unconditional mean. We define this mu, and it's just the expected value of yt. And now, the expected value of yt, assuming that yt started in the infinite past, will just be equal to the expectation of the term we have up here. And we note that the expected value of all the epsilons, of course, is zero. So all we're left with here is 1 plus theta plus theta square, which is an infinite sum multiplied by delta. And this sum in the parentheses here will converge to 1 divided by 1 minus theta. So this has a limit, which is given by delta divided by 1 minus theta. So this is the unconditional mean given stationarity of the process. Note that this is not equal to delta. So the unconditional mean of a stationary AR1 model is not given by the constant term delta, it is given by delta divided by 1 minus theta. So the autoregressive parameter theta matters for the unconditional mean of the process. Second, let's look at the unconditional variance. And we call that gamma zero. And we define that as the variance of yt, which is equal to the expected value of yt minus mu squared. Note that this, if we look at yt started at the infinite past and we, we subtract the mean, all we're left with is the epsilon part that we have in the infinite sum up here. So this is the expected value or the variance of 
epsilon t plus theta epsilon t minus 1 plus theta squared epsilon t minus 2 plus and we have an infinite sum. Now we know that the uh, that these epsilons, the shocks, are independent. So this equals the variance of each of these individual terms and all the cross products will be zero. So we can write this as sigma squared, that's the variance of epsilon t. Second we get the variance of theta, epsilon t minus one, so that's going to give us theta squared, sigma squared. Then we have the next term that will give us theta to the power of 4 multiplied by sigma squared and this is an infinite sum that continues like this. Write this as 1 plus theta squared plus theta fourth power so on multiplied by sigma squared and we note that this has a limit this is an infinite sum which is convergent if the stationarity condition is fulfilled so this has a limit given by sigma squared divided by 1 minus theta square. So we have a constant unconditional variance, it does not depend on t, and it depends on the sigma squared, but it also depends on the autoregressive parameter, theta. Finally, if we look at the autocovariances, let's consider the first autocovariance, so that's the covariance between yt and yt minus 1, which is equal to the expected value of yt minus mu multiplied by yt minus 1 minus mu. We can simply plug in and that gives us the expected value. Then we have yt minus mu, so that's going to be epsilon t plus theta epsilon t minus 1 plus theta squared epsilon t minus 2 plus dot dot dot, this is an infinite sum then we have to do the same for yt minus 1 and that's going to give us epsilon t minus 1 plus theta epsilon t minus 2 plus theta square epsilon t minus 3 etc. Once again this is an infinite sum. Now again if we just multiply these together and we remember that all the cross terms are zero because of independence then we get epsilon t here there's no epsilon t over here, so that's going to be 0. Then we have theta epsilon t minus 1 multiplied by epsilon t minus 1 over here. So we get uh, theta multiplied by the variance of epsilon t minus 1, which is given by sigma squared. Then we have a term here, epsilon t minus 2, and epsilon t minus 2 over here. And we get theta to the third power multiplied by the variance of epsilon t minus 2, Two given by sigma squared. Then we get uh, theta to the fifth power multiplied by sigma squared and it continues like this. This is again an infinite sum and note that if we take theta outside of parentheses we can rewrite this as theta multiplied by gamma zero. Again we get something that is constant and does not depend on t. So we've now we can show that the kth autocovariance, which is the covariance between yt and yt minus k, that that is going to be equal to theta to the power of k multiplied by gamma zero. Again this is constant, it depends only on k. The final thing we note is that if we look at the autocorrelation function that is rho k, which is defined as gamma k divided by gamma zero. We note that simply by plugging in, we get that this is equal to theta to the kth power. So this is exponentially decaying when yt is stationary, which is the case when theta is numerically smaller than one. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching.